uh, Namium Peck, who holds the world auction record for video art, was nearly dethroned on uh, 11 May 2011 by an installation signed William Conbridge, this one, Preparing the Flute, which fetched uh, $500,000 at Sotheby's New York. So this is a video installation with the model theater. Then I, will, I would like to talk um, about Bill Violin, because Bill Violin is on the, the market field, uh, the star artist uh, in the contemporary video market. And uh, he is, we without a doubt, uh, so the most thought after. Uh, and Viola broke onto the, the international art scene in 1995 uh, at the Venice Biennale, where he represented the United States. Uh, the work exposed was a turning point in video art entitled The Greeting. And um, I don't have it here, but I can show yeah, the incrementation and we come to this one later. So the greeting uh, brings to life the characters depicted in Jacopo Pontermo's visitation, a Manerist painting depicting the Virgin Mary welcoming her cousin Elizabeth in her arms. And the work was acquired by New York's Museum of Modern Art in 2001, and a year later, in 2002, Viola made his first auction appearance. The market is indeed that young in 2002, first auction appearance for Bill Viola. So uh, it was with a, a video entitled Incrementation, and the work sold fetch uh, the equivalent of uh, $61,000 the 27th of June 2002 at Christie's London. And since then, the value of his works has been continually claim claiming. Another Bill Viola video entitled Witness, this one, fetched $320,000 in 2005, and then $500,000 in 2007. This is a rise of 56% in two years only. The artist auction record wa was generated by a video and sound installation entitled Eternal Return, this one. And Eternal Return was acquired for 330,000 pounds, so it represents uh, six, uh, $613,000 dollars. Uh, it was in 2006 at Philips de Puy and Company. For uh, art buyers who wish to acquire uh, works by this pioneer of contemporary video art, um, it is not difficult to find anything at under $150,000. The video art market um, is extremely shallow. And even for an artist like uh, Bill Violin, a total of only 41 works have been proposed at auction in nine years. Only 41 works in nine years. And among these, uh, these works, 24 have been video installations. This uh, scarcity has effectively pushed some video art prices into the high-end bracket above $100,000 uh, on a pair with the prices bid for the traditional arts. But the segment also offers plenty of acquisition opportunities at prices below $10,000. 
$10,000. Although extremely rare on auction, the recent success of certain video signatures in the field has contributed to a gradual acceptance of the genre on the secondary market. And we also note that in video art, more so than in art photography, the biggest breakthrough is the auction market on sound bass by Asian artists. If we look at the top 15 artists working with video and light, and thus requiring a power supply, in terms of auction performances here, a third of them are Asian artists, we um, saw already uh, at the beginning of the talk uh, T.L. Sakurabai, uh, the Japanese artist Tatsuo Miyajima. Um, we, there, there are two Chinese artists, Li Wei and QZJ, and then Chen Den and the Korean artist Lili Nam. They are the best in, in this field, the best at auction in this field. We also noted that some of today's strongest contemporary artists are increasingly working with film. For example, uh, the famous wi Women Without Men by Shirin Neshat, or Women Are Heroes by the artist J.R., and uh, The Cremaster Circle by Matthew Barney, about which I would like to say a few words. So Matthew Barney, uh, Matthew Barney is a former top-level American footballer and he first caught the attention of a small circle of American art fans through his performance art and before developing a universe of significant theatrical intensity whose seductive and yet dissonant imagery has reinvented the place of film in contemporary art his first solo exhibition dates back to 1991 at the Los Angeles Gallery, and several months later, his work was exhibited in New York, then at Venice Biennale, and then at Whitney Museum in 1993. That kind of exposure put Barney on an art market fast track. Although at the time, he hadn't even started the work that made him one of the most important artists of his gener generation. The major project that really confirmed Barney's status was in fact a cycle of five art films, seven hours in all, Untitled Cremaster that he created between 1994 and 2002. As an example, you can see here uh, Matthew Borne at the Lawton Candidat. This is um, uh, a, pic a picture from the Cremaster 4. So Cremaster. Cremaster in is the most unusual work in the field of contemporary art. It invents a new mythology of the cycle of life and of a spiritual evolution. And the Cremaster universe oscillates between dreams and nightmares and is populated by hermaphrodite creatures, mutants, hybrid behind fighting with their animality and such is trying rites of passage. Mathieu Bernays' artistic ambitions have been generously met by, for example, the New York Guggenheim Museum and the Grand Opera in Budapest, both of which allowed him to film certain scenes for, of his film on their premise. Then there is the question of the financing of the epic films and their extravagant decors and accessories. In fact, Matthew Barney operates in much the same way as uh, Christo and Jean Claude, whose monumental projects are self-financed by the sale of peripheral objects 
that were used or contributed to the project. In addition, he overturned the standard economic rules of contemporary art by asking collectors to invest prior to the production of a work. Thus, Barney sells the accessories, photographs, drawings, installations, and costume that were used in making his films. Collectors therefore invest maybe more by conviction and are not tempted to, to, to speculate. As a result, there are few cases of creek resale and Matthew Barney's auction market is not particularly dense. Over the last 15 years, only 271 of his work has, has been, have been offered at auction. I said only because if you um, have a look on, for example, Takashi Murakami market over the same period, you can double the number of artworks offered at, at auction for Murakami. Barney's auction record is 400 and seventy thousand dollars for an installation created for Cremaster Two. This is the um, uh, the installation which set the record. But his major installations are rare, and buyers are essentially fast with the supply of prints and photographic works in a more affordable price range started to $5,000 for C-print edition of 50, for example. So I would like to, to finish by saying a few words about the special relationship video art has with the act of collecting. Collecting video art does not have the same implications as collecting traditional objects uh, like paintings, drawings, and sculpture for practical reasons and because video art uh, tends to strip the work of art of its social status function. This social status function is not fundamental to the act of collecting art, but it is nevertheless important for a large number of collectors. The choice of a work of art is an indicator, a social, cultural, aesthetic, and personal pointer. In short, the work's very material existence generates a whole range of signifiers and codes. Leaving aside video installation, which are in essence tangible, scriptural, and material, this notion seems to me fundamental when considering video art, stripped uh, of all the material support, or inter interactive works, for example. The social status dimension of the work is almost completely absent because of its non-materiality. It is not destined dist dist to be exposed to exhibit on the wall, I thought some collectors declare that they leave uh, their films looping constantly or almost. Uh, so the act of acquisition is therefore less related to a de desire of ownership than to a desire for an internal voyage or for the sharing of an artistic moment wi with other people. In effect, a video is the materialized artistic experience that we choose, we sh choose to watch alone or with friends. And the collection of video art and interactive works is intrinsically linked to technological evolution and to the assimilation of these evolutions in our daily lives and to ch the changes uh, that this technology induced in our mentalities. Indeed, this market essentially depends on the major shifts in our habits and, hat and attitudes, which implies a more spirit spiritual and less material re relationship with artworks. 
At the dawn of the internet and social networking era, video art and interactive works should have a very wide future, and the dematerialization of artworks may well contribute to revolution, revolutionize uh, the economics of tomorrow's art market. Thank you.